Hey yo! My name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs, and we are back with another review. The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered, released on March 22nd, 2024, for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Steam, is a remaster of the 3DS game of the same name, and developed by Furyu. For anyone that spent a little bit of time around my channel, it's quite clear that I am a huge fan of the turn-based genre, so naturally, I was looking forward to this game. I never got a chance to play the original, so when I heard that it was getting a remaster, I hopped on the chance to play it. Before we get too far into the video, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button to appease the mighty YouTube algorithm overlords. It really helps out the channel. And big thanks to NIS America for providing me with a review copy of The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered. Now that we're done with that, let's get into the video. So pop that corn and ice that drink, and let's get into the nitty gritty of The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered. What are the main reasons that you play a JRPG? The story, the characters, the interactions, the romance, to have your heart broken? Well, The Legend of a Legacy has very minimal amounts of everything, so let's see what we can do with the story characters and setting here. The Legend of a Legacy takes place on an island known as Avalon, which was only discovered 10 years prior by who is now known as the King of Adventures. It's mostly unexplored and uncharted, and that's what the whole story is about is going on an adventure in an unexplored area. The Legend of Legacy features seven playable characters. Miris is the last elementalist, a person with the power to communicate with elementals. Bianca is an amnesiac who wakes up on Avalon only remembering her name. Liber is lured to Avalon with the promise of adventure and treasure. Garnet is a Templar in service of the Holy Order. Eloise is a seductive alchemist pursuing the secret of eternal life. Owen is a legendary mercenary who will take any job if the price is right, and Filmia is the only native to Avalon, and is a frog prince from a lost kingdom. Each of the seven heroes of the game are adventuring across Avalon for their own reasons, be it personal or for their loved ones. Once you select a lead character, you can either choose to view the intro scene or skip it. It's best to view this opening cutscene as it sets the whole precedent for the game, and is pretty much the only story you're going to hear. The rest of the story is explained when entering a new area on the map, and whenever you arrive at a temple. As you progress, you get bits and pieces of knowledge about the island, and that it used to be a flourishing country that prospered due to the elementalists that had the ability to speak with the elementals. I won't go too far into the story at risk of spoilers, but the story is given in such small bursts that it can be hard to make sense of it, and it's really not that memorable. Though, this is an RPG that you don't play for story. This is a game that you play for gameplay. Speaking of which, let's get into that. Do you have a dream of wanting to be a cartographer? Do you want to draw out maps? Do you love Fantasy Star or Etrian Odyssey? Then The Legend of Legacy just might be the perfect game for you. Especially if you also love the Saga franchise. No, not Sega. Saga, as in Romancing Saga. Get out of here, Sonic. The Legend of Legacy features a hub town of Initium, where all of the characters hang out. When you initially select one of the seven party members, you will be accompanied by two other members. You can find the remaining four playable characters wandering around the town of Initium, so you can build your party as you see fit. To my experience, I did not notice any character being better than any other party member with specific weapons or armor, so really it's all down to personal preference. Personally, I use Liber, Mirs, and Eloise. After the intro, you have the ability to run out onto the island of Avalon and start your adventure. The game doesn't really give you any kind of direction, it generally just says have fun and lets you do as you please. You do have an intro map which acts as the tutorial that teaches you about combat and filling out maps, but really that's about it. Let's start with mapping. As you run around each screen, you'll see a percentage at the top of the mini-map. As you walk around and fill out that map, the number will increase. Once you've explored the whole map, the number will change from the percentage to complete. At any point, you can take that map for the specific area and sell it to the shopkeeper in Initium. However, you can only sell a map once, so you'll want to completely explore each area on the overworld for maximum profit. 
Unfortunately, this is one of the only reliable ways to get money, so you have to make it count. Enemies don't really drop money consistently. They do drop items that you can sell for a profit, but really, that's about it. Before we jump into the gameplay, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is trading. Along the western edge of the pier of Initium, you can send ships out to gather items for you. You can pay 300 gold for a 1 hour voyage, 1000 gold for a 3 hour voyage, or 5000 gold for a 5 hour voyage. The more gold you spend, the higher quality and higher amount of items that can be returned to you. These can be materials, consumable items, or even equipment. It's an interesting system and it runs while you're not playing, so if you're about to finish gaming for the night, send out a ship and when you return in the morning, you might have some new equipment or some really good items. And yes, before you ask, you can mess with the internal clock of your console to skip the wait time and gain a bunch of items immediately. Is it cheating? Maybe a bit, but this game needs it because this game is really difficult. With that, let's get into the combat of the game. Never before have I had a game that has kicked my butt like The Legend of Legacy. This game features some of the most frustrating and difficult combat systems and mechanics that I have ever experienced. If you're familiar with Saga or Final Fantasy II's leveling system, you will somewhat be familiar with The Legend of Legacy. In Legend of Legacy, you do not have a traditional level up system. Instead, stats and techniques level up individually. Let's start with formations. You can set several different formations, compiling the three categories of stances, attack, guard, or support. Attack will increase offensive power, guard will increase defensive power, and let block arts protect the whole party, and support increases turn speed and recovery art powers. This allows you to strategize based on whatever situation you're currently facing at the moment. For example, if you're fighting a large amount of single target enemies, you might want to go two attack stance and one guard type, so you can have one character nullify attacks, while the other two whittle down the enemy's HP. Or maybe you took a lot of damage and you need to heal, so you might want to go two support and one guard, so you can have two characters heal and one character defends them. You can decide on your formation before the beginning of each turn, so you're not locked in at the beginning of a battle. It's a unique level of strategy that adds quite a bit of depth to the battle system. As you use each stance, you will level it up, increasing your stats while you're using that current stance. HP and SP also increases during battle, however, it doesn't seem related to the stance you use, or if you use abilities, or if you take damage. It just seems kind of random. I'm sure there's some kind of algorithm on how it increases, but during my playthrough I couldn't determine what caused it to increase at all. On to techniques. When you equip a weapon, you only have a single technique that uses 0 SP. However, as you use a technique with a weapon, you have a chance to learn a new technique with something called an Awakening. Similar to the Saga series, when you awaken a new technique, that technique is learned permanently. And this is completely up to RNG. The only real way to raise the chances is to fight stronger enemies. It can be really frustrating when all you have are incredibly weak techniques after switching to a new weapon, and you're having difficulty to have that new awakening happen. Additionally, each technique has an individual level for each stance. As you use that technique, it will raise its level for your current stance, and its power is relative to the technique's level for the stance that you just leveled it up on. As such, you can expect Legend of Legacy to be incredibly grind-heavy, as you not only have to raise your stance levels, but also individual stance levels for each technique that you are using on a regular basis. And last but not least, if you deplete your HP to zero, not only can you no longer act like most RPGs, but it will reduce your max HP until you sleep at the end. However, the plus side, there are no resurrecting items. Any healing item or ability will resurrect you, and after battle, you are automatically healed to your current max HP. Which is good, because this game is so difficult, and throughout the entire game, I was struggling for even regular encounters. This is not an easy game. Every battle is an ordeal, so you can't just simply mash a button until enemies fall down. Additionally, battles do seem to have a 100% success rate for escaping. However, if you escape, you don't just escape from the battle, you escape to the entrance of the current area that you're in. This is kind of a double-edged sword, because if you're running really low on HP and SP, you can instantly leave and go back to town and heal yourself. But if you just wanted to get out of that battle because you didn't want to fight it, you now have to run all the way back to wherever you were in that area. It can be a little bit frustrating, but I guess take what you can get. 
If there was a competition for remasters that have gotten the best glow up, this would definitely be a prime contender. The Legend of Legacy looks so beautiful. The first thing I thought of when I saw the art style is this whole game looks like a flashback or a cutscene from Okami. Everything is outlined by very thick black lines and has a very cutesy look to it. The artists of Legend of Legacy are, please forgive me for mispronouncing these, Ryo Hareo, known for Final Fantasy XII and Brave Fencer Musashi, Masayo Asano, known for Legend of Mana and Ever Oasis, and Tomomi Kobayashi, known for the Saga franchise, Disgaea 4, and Shin Megami Tensei 4. All of those games are so artistically unique, and it definitely shows in The Legend of Legacy. The Legend of Legacy just looks so beautiful, and the cell shaded style really stands out. Though it does scream this is a 3DS game with its art style, I personally really enjoyed it, especially the character art. They're all so simple and they don't have noses. No noses, guys. That means they can't smell. Don't you feel bad for them? I feel bad for them. They don't know what's for dinner. They don't know the great smell of a bakery. Anyways, let's get back on topic. The game isn't overly bright, which is a concern with a lot of remasters. A lot of our remasters these days are just a bloom effect thrown on there. And luckily this game doesn't have it. It's just perfect. But one thing I absolutely adore of the graphics is the pop-in features. Like, as you run around dungeons and maps, the trees and fixtures just casually pop in, kind of reminding me of those pop-up books that you might have read when you were a child, where you turn the page and then it's like the trees and houses all pop up. It's such a weird artistic and aesthetic choice, but it gave a certain air of uniqueness to the game. I just love that aspect. I get so tired of every game feeling the same, and this pop-in made the game feel unique, and it just makes me smile. The music. The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered's OST is incredibly peaceful. Composed by Masashi Hamazu, known for Final Fantasy XIII and Unlimited Saga. Yeah, yeah, I know. Say what you will about Unlimited Saga, but if you're gonna say one thing is good about that game, it's 100% going to be the music. Legend of Legacy features a lot of piano compositions, and as such, sounds beautiful. Upon listening to the game, I could hear a bit of Hamauzu's signature sounds in songs such as Hidden Forest and Melody of Shadow. They instantly gave me that Final Fantasy XIII vibe, and I really enjoyed it. Seeing how I absolutely loved everything about Final Fantasy XIII, but that's a topic for another video. As I was saying, Legend of Legacy just has one of those soundtracks that's so peaceful that it almost doubles as a lullaby to put you to sleep. Not just area themes, but battle themes too. Nothing in particular stood out as amazing, but they all felt incredibly appropriate and calming, if that makes sense. It's the kind of soundtrack I would use if I had to put myself to sleep. Not even a negative. Not everything has to be upbeat and anxiety inducing. Sometimes relaxing music can have just as much of a positive effect on you. So as Legend of Legacy was originally a 3DS game, it shouldn't be too long, right? My playthrough of Legend of Legacy was about 45 hours. This included lots of grinding and exploration as I was adamant on filling out every area to 100%. You could probably cut that back a little if you just rushed through areas, but I wanted to get the full experience myself. As for pacing, honestly it's up to you. Legend of Legacy is a very non-linear game, so you can probably rush the game in 20 to 30 hours if you only do the mandatory temples, or you could probably spend upwards of 50 hours if you want to level up multiple weapons per character. Personally, I would have preferred a bit more story presence, but it doesn't ruin the game, it just could have felt more complete as a JRPG experience. So there you have it. The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered is a solid experience, but I can't help but feel it like it was incomplete, and all the aspects of the game could have been expanded on. Stat increasing methods, skill learning, story, and combat. Luckily, with the developer's future release of The Alliance Alive, which took the concept of Legend of Legacy and expanded on it in every aspect. However, that's a review for another time. Are you going to be picking up The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered? Or did you play the original version? What were your thoughts on it? Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this review, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you subscribe, you'll see plenty more JRPG content, reviews, various lists, 
and perhaps even some RPG news coverage. Anyways, thank you for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.